Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to the match preview for Tottenham versus Everton Sunday game, the Saturday game actually, isn't it? I feel like every game we play is on a Sunday these days, so it's nice to have a bit of a change. Um, yeah, so Spurs away on Saturday. We're going into this off the back of a defeat on last Sunday to Man United, a disappointing performance. Um, looking to bounce back, but obviously going into this second favourites, um, Terry Owen, um, you guys, what are you? What's your take on Spurs? Obviously, there's a, a big subplot in this being Charlton's first game against Everton as well, which is going to be a tough watch, I think, isn't it? I think especially yeah. you, Terry, you were the one who christened them the modern day Duncan Ferguson. Well, he was in in terms of his uh, of his importance and his his sort of role at the club. I did consider him that, but you know he, he's he's one of the few strikers, uh, well, one of the few players who've left Everton in the Premier League era who's gone on, who's gone off with the full well wishes of the club. You know, we tend to be a little bit resentful when players leave, even if they've done really well for us. Like you know, sometimes it's the players' fault. Like we all wished Ronald Lukaku really well when he left, but then the first time he played us, he cupped his ears to us. It's like. What 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 like I we really liked you. We didn't hound you out. We wanted you to stay. Yeah, so it was similar with was... Arteta. Do you remember Arteta did it? Didn't he like grab the Arsenal badge after he scored the penalty against us? Yeah, I mean we've had we've had that a lot with with uh, players who leave now. Obviously, leave and go on to like you know do well. That is like sometimes you know as every club does, you chase out players who aren't good enough for good players who go on to you know to other good clubs. We tend to not really have a good relationship with them once they're not in blue anymore. But Richarlison, I think it's completely different. Um, you know, just owing to the fact of how dire the situation was last season and how big a part he played in saving the club, I think he'll be he'll be one of those players who um, will get a warm reception every time he, he plays against Everton. And you know, there's only a few players like that. Even though it was a bit ropey at first, John Stones gets a good reception now. You know, Gillard Delafeu got a good reception when he came back with Watford. Uh, Richarlison did more for Everton than any of them. So um, I think he'll be received quite well by the supporters. It'll just you know, we, we've we've moved on now. It won't be hard to see him against us. I think the uh, the strangeness of him playing for Tottenham was worn off at this point. I think if this had happened in the first or second game, it would have been really strange. But a lot of water's passed now. Yeah, with that in mind, obviously Spurs are in a good run of form in the top four at the moment. Um, this is going to be an even more difficult game than Man United, I think, and we didn't play well in that. Yeah, um, no, we didn't play at all well in the um, first half. We were miles off it. Um, see what we could try to do, but I feel like they're so weak physically at the back. Man United, you need us again. I feel that was a game for Calvaloon, and I think I've proved right by how we played in the last 10 minutes. Um, but Spurs are a completely different team, I think. They work more in counter-attack. Spurs, if you look at the way Kane drops deep and sort of the, the wide plays bomb on and sort of try and get him behind. They are they are a classic counter-attacking team. And you wonder how can we limit that? I think that's what got to be Everton's aim for this game. I don't think... You know, you see the way we play against Southampton, where we really went after them. I think in the end, Spurs, you're gonna have to sort of give them less chance to counter attack on you because if they've got if they got the ball amongst the three centre halves and the two midfielders, they're not gonna cause you that much danger than they would if you lose the ball and they can counter attack quicker. So it's gonna be a tough game. We can't play like we did against them last season, which still leaves mental scars to this day. The way we we had a, a defence that was in our own half, back at Goodison. And while they, Harry Kane was just pinging the ball over to Son every time, um, it was a truly horrific performance. I'd say that Spurs game last season was the worst performance of, of, of the season, definitely. Um, so a few during that sort of few weeks. Um, but, but, yeah, it's going to be really tough. And then there's Newcastle after this, which is... A lively game, um, but it's up to Everton to act professional, um, stick to the task. And we, if we get a draw from it, it'll be a really good draw, and you, you take that point home, don't you? Definitely, yeah. Uh, I think just to sort of get just to bounce back a little bit from the Man United game, that was a really disappointing result. I thought we were um, 
I thought we had a good chance of like getting something out of that, but we barely like did ourselves no favours. I think yeah. if you're Frank Lampard, you want to sort of get the players and regroup a little bit because I don't know what it was the most complete performance I've seen for quite some time. Now they seem like we really lacked a day. Yeah, um, I thought we were miles off it. Like I said, um, it was it was just as simple as defending and giving the ball away in our own half. We clearly went into the game with a, with a plan to counter attack. We didn't really give ourselves much chance to counter attack because we just passed them among the back four, lost it, and we were all over the place. We couldn't get out of our own half first half. Um, second half, once Dom came on, and McNeil, I think we did a bit better. But first half, we were miles off, and you're looking to sort of regain that momentum somehow during this game. It might be an early goal or a tackle or a good first 10 minutes, but we have to we have to try and gain some momentum in this game because it's going to be difficult to way at Tottenham to gain that kind of momentum, especially if they're doing really well. So it's going to be tough. Oh, man, what sort of team would you go with? I'll go to you on this one, Terry. Where did, um, would you change the team from the United game? I think there's been a lot of talk about the f- personnel changes possibly, but would you change it? Uh, well, there's going to be one enforced change, isn't there? Because Anthony Gordon's got a suspension for five bookings after nine games somehow. But um, so for me, I'd only change that. I'd bring Dwight McNeil in. Yeah, I'd bring I'd bring Dwight Nick, Dwight McNeil in just for um, for Anthony Gordon. Obviously, <laughs> I've seen some people uh, talking about you know moving the team around, trying to accommodate, like bringing James Garner in, maybe put a Wolby in the front three, the, uh, bring Dominic Calvert Lewin back in from the start. Uh, for, uh, for the start, I would not be playing Dominic Albert Lewin from the start because he's clearly not capable just yet. He's going to be built back up slowly. Lampard said in his press conference he's not even taking part in every training session yet. They're sort of trying to manage that as gently as they can. Uh, I wouldn't be moving a Wobie out of that centre midfield three for anything because he's the most influential player in the uh, in the team. It's an attack and moment. He's the main creator. You want him to have as much view of the pitch as possible. You don't want him further up um, out wide where he limited his his, um, his options as much as you know I do understand wanting to see James Garner I'd keep the same shape mm-hmm. and I'd just bring in McNeil I don't think McNeil should have dropped out for the United game anyway I thought you know Gordon uh, was oh, was out of the team due to illness and then McNeil came in and scored the winning goal I think he should have kept the shirt and I think Definitely. this time he comes back in and I think uh, unless he, you know, he stinks the place out, I think uh, he should keep the shirt. It's not like Gordon was demanding selection. And um, one thing I would one hundred percent do though is play McNeil on the left. He's more comfortable there. He contributes more there. Okay, it's not like Mope is a target man who we can hit with crosses, but Calvert Lewin will come into the game at some point. Um, so, and I think it's important not to mess about with the centre of midfield three because. Spurs play a two, and as good as they are, we've we've seen when you play a two-man midfield, a strong three-man midfield can get the better of you and overrun you, and that's what we need to do because we haven't got the quality up front that Spurs have got, not even close. They've got two 20-goal-a-season strikers and then Richarlison and Kulovesevsky when he's fit. Um, so it, for me, it's our, our game is all about our midfield three. We've got to make that really... Win the battle. Yeah, put a mark on theirs, yeah. Yeah, I think definitely. I've got, you don't strike me as the types to like it up for me either. So I definitely like make it a real sort of feisty battle in there. I reckon. Yeah, I yeah. mean, go on, you go on. Yeah, I think Owen's got no, to say they have they have um, they have conceded soft goals at times. And yeah, I, I, I think we I think one thing we should be really good at. Especially when McNeil and I know is um hasn't been given many corners after that horrific one he took against Forest. But he is really good at getting the set pieces into dangerous areas. If you have a look at the set pieces he's took, most of them have gone into a pretty good areas. People just remember that one terrible one. And he he's took them for years and he, he's really good. And we've got two centre halves of Cody, Fizzy and then Tarkovsky. He's good at getting the end of them. Got a nana. We we should be doing better from these scoring from corners every single game. We should be looking more and more threatening. So I think again, yeah, maybe a set piece, but we're not the most 
one thing I will say about us this season, we don't look like scoring a goal in any game I watch us playing. We, no, we do. Like, we look don't. really like too much. Yeah, uh, in every game. The only game that I think we looked at threatening him was the, um, the Southampton game. Other than that, I think we've been kind of limited. It's been if we can keep a clean sheet or score more or whatever. Yeah, I think keeping so it tight back to us is absolutely score. paramount. We're going to have to find ways of scoring as well. And that can be set pieces, long shots, whatever. But we have, we'll have to find a, a way. And equally, we're going to have to continue to keep them out because Spurs took the making out of us last season. So we want to sort of um, get one back on them as well because that was not a fun night. No, we need to sort of restore a bit of respect in this fixture as well. You've made a good point there because... I feel like you say this about every away fixture we enter, James, every yeah. time I'm on one of these. We need to put the others over last year. <laughs> Who didn't last year? I think to be I think apart from that Leicester game, I can't remember us winning an away game last season. Brighton. Was it just oh, those yeah. two, wasn't it? Mr. Yeah. Rappafax loves to Jeez. bring up um, Brighton game as the biggest tactical masterclass this century. I'll have you know. So I, I apologize like, for getting that. To be fair, it was no nice to have does. someone who had a plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it wasn't yeah. just telling the players to just play. <laughs> no, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's what... Yeah, Rafa Fact is me, me favourite Twitter account, so anyone who's watching, go and have a search up of Rafa Fact. <laughs> There's post-truth from this Rafa Fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> But yeah, I think we definitely need to be a bit more compact. I think that's the only way we're going to get anything out of this game is to be really ugly. To be honest, let's just make it ugly. Yeah, I mean, we've been in every game. Like the the um, the result against Man United wasn't great, but it was it was a you know combination of things. There was quite a few players all having a bad game in the same game. Like Idrissa Gay, you know, it was the main one who stuck out. Like a lot of players were off it, and. Um, Man United were there to be got at because they weren't playing particularly well. Um, and their goals were from two errors, two errors in possession, and just had you know some clinical finishing. And you know, in one case, the keeper, our keeper made it quite easy for, for Ronaldo to score. But even at the end, we were we were still very much in the game going for it. We didn't look, we didn't look like we we, st- we didn't suddenly start playing well, we didn't suddenly look like we were gonna get something. But our heads didn't go down. We were still trying to force it. We were still trying to get through. And if it not for the width of a hair of um, Rafa Veran, we would have had football's greatest ever moments of a Jordan Pickford 94th minute um, equaliser against Man United. I think don't think their fan base would have ever come back from that if that had gone in. By the way, I think, um, think Goldbridge would smash the telly or something. Yeah, all the. Um, all the Man United fans who just like cosplay as football fans who are like, oh, you know, small arms Pickford and, you know, they just repeat the things that the proper fans say. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have known what to do. But it, but the point point is, even at the end of that game with a, with a really, you know, tepid performance, we were still in the match and still going for it and still trying to make something happen. So we just need to be like that in this game. We need to have that determination. And honestly, we just need to be... Um, a team of bastards. We're not better than Spurs. We're not even close to being as good no as Spurs. Way, yeah. But the Premier League, if you can be our asses, you can get results. If you, you know, if I want us to. I want us to be Jesse Marsh's nightmares um, team. I want us to be slowing the game down. I forgot about what a whining prick he was for an hour. Oh, oh yeah, he was, he was a head, wasn't he? he I was. I was one of them. The way when didn't they boot the ball out more than there was like a, a statistic that showed they wasted more time than we didn't. Like they, Oh, he, he's got his um, post-match press conference advice from Jürgen Klopp. It's clear to see that. Every, woe is me, woe is me. I'm Jesse March, woe is me. Honestly, he's tap, been here five stupid, minutes. Tapping his little Apple watch. Been a lead five minutes and he thinks he runs the league, honestly. He does my head in. <laughs> Someone needs to do something about these teams who aren't playing the way we want them to. That's pretty yeah. much what his back and boils down yeah, to. No, that, 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 that. My, my lead that fans don't come. My lead fans don't buy Leeds tickets for other clubs fans to come here in time. Which when the winning with twenty minutes ago was way of crap. 
<laughs> like you said, Klopp's the same. Like something needs to be done about these teams who aren't playing the way I want them to. They need to roll over and play dead when we play them. But um, that's what really what needs to be do. said about the way Klopp speaks to the people in the media. It's, oh yeah, the video Connor comes a little bit weird and all, isn't it? Yeah, Why is he? Di- he was dissing an ex Liverpool player, but wasn't he like Haman or someone? Yeah, it was Didi Hammer. What a horrible bloke. To, to the man's no angel himself, like, but but <laughs> no, it went to the man he was having to go. I was the journalist, if you actually listen to it. Yeah, and why are you telling he starts, me like, to DD Hammer? And like, he's not, I mean, it's weird because like DD Hammer and yeah, Bob should be like best mates. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I just um, I just want us to be like that basically. The type of performance that I'd have, Marsh, that's and everyone going, going sick. Um, I want us to be wasting time, I want us to be. I want us to be to do it all the shit house behavior, whatever, all every bit of that because we're going to need it. You know, but we've got the, the thing is, old. Everton fans love that. But we, I think we revel in it more than anyone watching the other team supporters spitting feathers. It's great when it happens for you, yeah, it's horrible when it happens against you. Yeah. Like, like yeah, that, think... Nunes, that, that Nunes at Liverpool who, who did the crying motion to the Arsenal fans when he scored in, early in the first half. You're like, oh, mate, that's well too early to do that. But that's great if it comes off, but it's it's amazing when it doesn't and it's against you. Love all that. But yeah, basically we've got to do that. Basically, very um, be very yeah. ugly, very basically make the Tottenham fans spit feathers. Even if we don't get the desired result, just be yeah, as just horrible to play against as you can be. Oh yeah, well, they, they, you just know, to confirm, we're playing football, not UFC this weekend. This is a football preview, and we're not just <laughs> endorsing, just kicking the shit out of them for ninety minutes. No, I don't want. I thought, to I thought be... we were talking about who's going to defend the belt. Yeah, well, I'm not even saying be be dirty. I'm not saying like you know hard tackles injure people. I'm saying waste time. I'm yeah, saying I'm, be... I'm saying um, you know wait for them to come and get the ball and throw it the other way. <laughs> just like yeah, just, like... honestly, <laughs> just just waste time. Um, There's ways of doing it without, like, you can't, you don't have to play dirty, you've just got to... Does any other fan base play in the dark a game? Are we going to win this? We're going to waste time. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> the boot the kick. The shit hey, the... You, have you seen our front three? There's no other way. <laughs> that is it. That, well, that's that exactly the point. We were discussing with him all how we're going to hurt Spurs, but we've been really yeah, too much this season. Our, 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 our personal... Like personal experience has taught us that this team, like like oh, it says, what games have we looked like we're going to score in? So let's just be horrible. Yeah, exactly. make, make sure we win the game. Put it in line. Stop it going in line. It's like whatever. Like do all this entertainment. Just be the be that team that no one ever wants to. Um, it always lasts on match of the day. I know. But we're on Sky because we're the R5 kickoff, so I want Sky Sports to really be pissed off at the end of the game because we didn't give them a spectacle. What, make it a horrible nil nil? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love it. I'd take it now. I want to put it, I want to put... I want, I want that stat that comes on after the game, but he makes stats up Sky anyway, but anyway, where it says, the ball was in play for 43 seconds in this game. What a disgrace that was. What, what, what have you got to say at home about Jordan Pickford and everything? <laughs> oh, and Graham soon has to be in that studio beside himself. And, and, and here's a video yeah, this is of Seamus Coleman that. taking three minutes to take a throw in because he lost the ball. <laughs> here's Jordan Pickford on the goalpost having a ciggy before he takes an in. Before he takes a goal kick. <laughs> oh, God. And not only that, the ones from abroad, they're not, they're, like, they're not even English cigarettes. It's a disgrace for an England international. Got them juicy free from Cyprus. But let's ask Ian Holloway what he thinks about it. Well, if it was we got out of a proper Brexit, not a Ramona's Brexit, then we might have. Uh, he might have been smoking the English stuff. If, if, if we have, if we had a proper Brexit, then Ian Evans might have been putting crosses in on us. We could fuck from the left wing. <laughs> <laughs> not Brexit, Ramona's Brexit. My God. But yeah, let's move <laughs> another way. On the nose, <laughs> <laughs> We wrap it up anyway. On 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 the note of result, um, what um what were you predicted results? I'll go to you first. Though, and what you nil nil in in the um, spirit of what we were talking about, and nil nil, and the, t- the balls in play for half an hour. <laughs> Teddy, 
I'm going to go nil nil with both teams having an XG of nil. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go one one. Someone's got to suggest that there might be a goal, so I'll say a one all draw. And both sides to go down to 10 men or something along those lines. Something might happen. Um, some might get sent off, but it'll happen. Something might happen. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, everyone's gone for a draw, a low scoring draw, and not very desirable to watch draw, probably. But I'll just, I'll, I'll just say happy. I'll us more than it'll suit Spurs. Honestly, I'll just be happy not to watch Michael Keane put an own goal in the top corner this time. And oh, then go off with a um, go off with, with illness, go off with embarrassment, you mean. Honestly, I'm the first player I've ever seen go off the pitch with it with with a um, with a pulled ego. A pulled uh, he was he was embarrassed though, so he just got ragged off the pitch. And that was the game Carragher said we had the championship back four and we had John Joe Kenny left back. We had Holgate and Keane as centre backs and Coleman. It was right only back. a week before that people were telling us we should give John Joe a new deal. Oh, so. yeah, he just won't be a turn or lead player and that made him eligible for a new contract. Could kick the ball with his left foot, sign him up. Yeah, oh, Jesus. I mean, whatever happens, I mean, that's it's a good way to finish up that. Now you mention is that, like, you know, obviously the Man United result was disappointing and this is probably going to be a tough game, but. Whatever it was, we have improved on that at least. Like this, this season is at least going slightly better than that. Last season was an unmitigated disaster, and the target this season is to basically make it a bit less dramatic. Let's just, um, like I say, let's not have any drama. Let's just try and you know sail along a little bit. Um, yeah, an, an ugly draw would be very nice for us. Uh, yeah. On that note, we'll wrap it up. Um, yeah, there you go, guys. Let us know your predictions as well, of course. Drop us a comment. Um, let us know if you think there might be something other than an ugly draw. Maybe um, comments coming in. Let us know your opinions on the whole thing, every, everything going into this game, how you're feeling. I think we might get on. Um, drop us a comment, give this video a like, and subscribe for more content. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching on the Toffee Blues. <laughs>